Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Talks on YouTube. And today I'm going to bring you guys a slightly different video because this video is going to be a kind of two year follow up to my Career Foundry web development course review. Now, around a couple of years ago, I completed a full stack web development bootcamp with Career Foundry. And following on from that, I made a video review because when I was looking for these boot camps, I was really struggling to find reviews from people who'd actually done them. And over the last couple of years, there's been tons of comments on that video from people who've been interested in the course, people asking questions, people asking if I was paid to make that video and all kinds of things. So what I wanted to do is bring you guys a follow up video to that. And I want to start this video by saying a couple of things. Firstly, Career Foundry have not asked me to make this video. What I'm going to say in this video is my own opinion and my own experience. And I have also done a couple of interviews with Career Foundry about my experience on the course, um, but none of those have been paid. This is just me sharing my opinion of Career Foundry, having signed up to the course and having paid for it with my own money. Secondly, if you do decide you want to do one of the Career Foundry courses, I have put a link below. And if you click through on that link, you will save 5% off your course fees. And it doesn't matter which course you do with Career Foundry, uh, you will save 5% using that link. That is also an affiliate link, which means I will get a small portion uh, of kind of commission as well, which helps me keep going with this channel and bring you guys review of all kinds of tech. Now, all that's been said, let's kick off this video. And I'm going to try and keep this short. And so I want to start off just by doing a refresher as to why I signed up for Career Foundry uh, two years ago. And for me, there was uh, a handful of reasons for wanting to do that. So my main reason was wanting to change career. And if you watch my full review, which I have linked below, uh, you'll get more of a story on that. I'd always done little bits of code, but what I wanted was a way of changing career completely. And I wanted some kind of guidance and mentoring throughout that process. And I looked around at all sorts of boot camps and I kind of favoured the idea of a remote one because it meant I could do it from home. And I favoured the idea of a part time one because it meant I could work it around a full time job because I couldn't afford to stop working for how many months it was to do a boot camp and get a job. Now, there's a handful of boot camps out there that offer that kind of remote learning part time kind of thing. And in the end, I went with Career Foundry for a variety of reasons. And again, I outlined these in full in my other video, but the main ones really for me were it was a structured process. So yes, all of the stuff you find in these boot camps is stuff you can find if you just search around on YouTube, but it adds a structure to your learning. Secondly, they have tutors. These are people who work in tech and have done for a while. And these people look over your code and they can also be people you reach out to if you get stuck. This is really good because it means you've actually got someone looking at your code as you go along, just making sure that it's not particularly hacky. And this also prepares you for a kind of real life work environment when you might find yourself doing code reviews. Secondly, they have mentors. So right from the start, you're paired with someone who works in tech and you kind of have like a call with them once a month and they kind of help mentor you through the process. They're the person who also goes over your final project of each section. So your tutor looks at your code as you go along and you do the kind of little chapters. And then at the end of the kind of epic, I suppose, that's when your tutor looks at your code. And then the other reason I went for it was to do with the career support. Now, Career Foundry do offer a job guarantee where they say if you haven't got a job in a relevant field within six months, they will refund you your course. And this is great for kind of confidence, especially as there aren't huge amounts of hoops to jump through to meet the criteria for that refund. If you want to know more about that, I do talk more about that in the other video, so I'm not going to go into that in depth right now. And whilst the idea of that money back guarantee is really nice, it was a career support that I really wanted. And as someone coming at it who'd been in a career in youth work for kind of 10, 15 years and wanted to change to a completely different sector, the course that went with that enabled me to kind of write a CV and do my LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. And alongside that, having a career coach who would help you um, go through things like the interview process, they'd look over your CV, they'd offer advice, they'd perhaps do some kind of mock interviews, basically whatever you need to help you get a job. And for me, I had a really good career coach. Richard was brilliant. Uh, he really helped me out. And that, I think, is what helped me ultimately get a job in tech. And so those were the reasons for me picking the Career Foundry Bootcamp. And actually looking around at bootcamps nowadays, I think I'd probably make the same decision again for those same reasons. And so before I talk about what from the course has been useful in my career to date, let me just share my own kind of career journey. So as I was finishing my full stack bootcamp, uh, the kind of pandemic was in full force and we were in lockdowns here in the UK. And so what I found myself doing was slowing down the end of my course and trying to get some other work just to get some more experience of working with clients. Now, I had some connections in the charity sector, so I reached out to some people and offered my services for free just to get some experience. This meant I could build some real life projects that weren't just kind of tutorials, but they were things that I'd done for clients with clients. 
And for me, and for any of you guys looking to change career, it's those projects that are really good to draw on when you come to the interview process, because it's those things that show that you don't just follow tutorials, but you can work with people and help understand their needs and what they want and develop something from scratch. And so my main advice would be if you do do a boot camp, actually try and tap into some of your contacts and see if there's places you can develop your skills and use your skills as you go through the boot camp. So I finished my course in, I think it was about three months, I was offered a full-time uh, web development post um, and I started that and I did that particular post for a year and a half. I was really lucky to end up with a company who were really enthusiastic about taking a chance on me as a boot camp graduate, uh, but also a company who were willing to give me a chance to kind of train up and learn new things. Um, and whilst it was a really small company and quite fast paced, uh, I had a really good line manager who was really up for helping teach me things and show me things, uh, but also allowed me to set some time aside to continue my own learning as well. Uh, alongside that, I was also continuing my own learning outside of work, just wanted to teach myself more and more and just playing around with different bits of technology. Um, and during my time for that company, I was able to kind of learn some new things that we didn't use and put some of those things into practice. So whilst we built a lot of websites with WordPress, I was able to introduce Tailwind into that, which is a CSS platform that actually allowed us to build sites much faster and much more responsive. Uh, now Tailwind isn't something covered in the Career Foundry course. It's fairly similar to Bootstrap, which is, um, but I would recommend checking out Tailwind because it is brilliant. And then about five months ago, I was offered a new post with a company as a front-end engineer. Um, and I was really looking for jobs that were fully remote and somewhere I could continue to develop my career. And also for a pay rise, because I took a pay cut when I changed career and I wanted to try and get my salary back up to where it was. And that means for the last four months, I've been working for a fully remote company in the UK, focusing on kind of front end stuff for websites and learning lots in particular about accessibility and making sure websites can be used by anyone, whether they've got a disability or not. So let's talk about salary a little bit, because I think this is one of the things where the boot camps um, often kind of oversell themselves. It's not unusual if you kind of scroll through tech Twitter and look at some of the other boot camps where they're saying you're going to start from like £50,000 or $50,000, you'll be up to 100000 in a few years. And actually, that's completely unrealistic. And it's unrealistic for a whole variety of reasons. Um, a lot of it is that when you change career and when you um, are starting out in tech, even if you know how to code, you've still got a lot to learn about the processes for different companies. And there are quite a number of junior positions out there, but they do tend to be quite competitive as well. This means I think for someone in the UK, realistically, you're probably looking at about 24,000 as a kind of starting rate. That being said, you can up that fairly quickly if you're willing to put in hard work and work on advance in your career. And so in the kind of year and a half that I've been doing this full time, I've gone from 24 to 34. And I think that's really kind of the one thing where a lot of these courses do get it wrong. I think they get it wrong with salary because I think whilst in an ideal world that's what you could be earning, that's very much the kind of top end they tend to advertise. And it's much better if you kind of look out for the sort of jobs in your area and kind of manage your own expectations better before signing up to a course rather than taking what the course say. Because even if a course have got best intentions and are transparent about what their students earn, they are still trying to sell you a course. And the higher that base salary, the more likely you are to sign up to a course. And so then finally for this video, um, I want to talk about what skills from my Career Foundry course I'm still using. Now, as I said in my previous video, the focus of the Career Foundry course is largely on JavaScript. So of course you learn HTML and CSS because they're the backbones of everything and you learn some frameworks, but all of the frameworks that you learn tend to be around JavaScript. And for me, this was a big selling point for the course because JavaScript is something that's becoming used more and more and more, especially with the popularity of things like React Native and React, uh, both created by Facebook, things like Vue.js, things like Angular. The demand for JavaScript is getting higher and higher as more companies switch to using it. And so that was part of wanting to do the course with the focus on JavaScript, but it also meant I could go deep into a programming language rather than just kind of scratching the surface with JavaScript and then scratching the surface with Python or Ruby uh, or something like that. And so you were taught all of that. You were also taught about development models like kind of agile. You were taught about code reviews. You talk about testing uh, and all sorts of other things that kind of perhaps happen to make the coding process a streamlined machine rather than just you writing code. And in my first development position, we worked on our kind of workflow as a team, uh, but we didn't have set structures in place. However, when I was interviewing for my second role, a lot of places were talking about kind of agile and all that kind of stuff. And so I was able to go back to my career foundry notes and to the course material, which you still have access to when you finish and read back up on some of those things. As I said, my new job also has a big focus on accessibility. So I was able to go back to the accessibility stuff that career foundry had taught me and use that as a refresher for my interview as well. 
And for the most part, actually, I found the course content really useful. It's been stuff that I've gone back to again and again, and I felt like it's given me a really good foundation for my career. There's obviously a few things I don't use, so I haven't touched Angular since, I haven't touched Vue since, um, and to be honest, they were personal choices because I preferred React. Um, and whilst I've used React on a few personal projects, I haven't actually used it in a work context. So that's kind of where I'm at two years after finishing my course. I've got my salary back up to where it was beforehand, so I'm back on 34,000. Um, I'm using a lot of the skills from Career Foundry, and I guess most importantly, the Career Foundry course did enable me to find a job. And so if you're watching this update, uh, you're probably saying, well, would I still recommend the course? And my answer is yes. Now, the course has gone up since I did my original review, so it now costs around £6,000. And when you take into account this is like a up to 10 month course, that is quite pricey. Um, if you compare it to other boot camps, it's kind of in the middle range. So there are some boot camps that cost kind of 15 grand upwards. There's also some that cost about one and a half thousand. But what you get with the kind of career foundry one is you get the kind of personal support that you don't get with some of the cheaper ones. And for me, having someone who was a mentor, having someone who was a tutor, having someone who would guide me through the process of changing careers were all things that were really important. And I think the things that you really want to look out for if you are looking at boot camps and if you do want to use them as a way to change career. And I say that because there's all sorts of places you can go to learn to code for free. There's places like Free Code Camp, there's tons of YouTube tutorials, and there are things that I've pointed people to in the comments of my other video just to say, if you're not sure if this is for you, go and have a go at some of this stuff and see if it is rather than spending six grand on a course. However, what you get from a bootcamp is you get a kind of roadmap to your career change. So you can say, right, the course is going to take me X amount of time, I'm going to allow X amount of time to change jobs, so in a year's time, I'm going to have changed my career. And in my case, kind of going from a charitable sector to the tech sector, all of the advice I had around kind of changing CVs and kind of mock questions and kind of mock tasks and things were really helpful because it enabled me to see a very different interview process to that which I was used to. So if you are looking for a web development bootcamp, I would really encourage you to look at Career Foundry. I think they're quite open about the expectations generally. I think their course content is really good. The customer support is really good as well. And then having the kind of tutor, the career coach and the mentor are also really useful things to have. If you guys have got any more questions about kind of where I'm at now, or if you are thinking about the course and you've got some questions about the course, then do stick them below. If you go and look at the comments on my other video, you'll see that what I often do is don't say to people, go and sign up for a course. What I tend to say to people is, go and have a go at some other code somewhere else and see if this is for you first. Because I think your own education is something that's worth spending money on, but I think it's something you need to know that you want to do first. And so spending six grand on a course that you don't like is a waste of money. But having a go at some of the stuff on free code camp and then going back to the course to give yourself a structured learning path, once you know it's something you want to do and something you enjoy, that's a really good investment in your own education. Um, like I said at the start of the video, if you do want to sign up to Career Foundry course, there is a link below. That is an affiliate link, so I will get a small cut of what you uh, sign up for, but also you will save 5% on your course. And if you do click that link, then thank you very much. It really helps this channel out and it helps me out and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't and you just want to comment and find out more, then do that. I've also put a link to my LinkedIn because I suspect that some people here are kind of watching this video going, is this real? Is this a fake? Is this something Career Foundry have made him do? Uh, and if you want to connect on LinkedIn and ask me questions on there and kind of see that I'm actually a real life developer uh, who has genuinely changed careers, um, then do feel free to do that because I know, um, and quite rightly, we're suspicious of everything on the internet. So feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to add a comment below, connect with me on LinkedIn, hit me up on kind of Twitter or whatever, and I will see you guys again soon.